Cowboys Nation, it's your boy DMV back with another one. And I just kind of want to address an issue, not necessarily an issue, but it's really a good problem to have, right? Um, the Cowboys have done such a, a great job at drafting and finding undrafted players out there that us Cowboy fans are up in arms by things like Isaiah Land uh, getting cut and or waived or, or whatever the term is. And in my mind, you know, I was hurt for a little bit because, you know, being an HBCU alum, I really wanted to, I, I really wanted it to pan out. And I felt like he wouldn't be around during the waivers process, and he wasn't. So really for me, and this narrative is being created, and I don't know why the narrative is being created, that nobody that the Cowboys have cut have come back to bite them. And my whole thing is, it's not about players coming back to bite the Cowboys. Like Ridgeway did not come back. And I know that it's a different situation. He was kind of cut during the year last year. But Ridgeway, yeah, of course, it's not about him coming back to bite Dallas, but it's about we're better with that player. We're better with developing that player at said time. It makes us a better football team. That's what the narrative should be. It's about being the best football team that you can be at whatever given time it is. And that's why Isaiah Land cutting him has so many people up in arms. So it's like, you know, our writers, they'll create these, these narratives and, and all of them will stay on the same code. When in all actuality, the code is about the Dallas Cowboys being the best team that they can be. You know what I'm saying? These narratives and, and all these things that are created, like us fans aren't really going for it now, now, now these days. And I think that that's where the pushback comes. You know what I'm saying? Where it's just like, people aren't falling for the okie doke anymore. Fans are doing a little bit more research. Uh, you know, people are diving in the film a little bit more. They understand it. And they're not just buying anything that you sell. Um, and, I mean, but I do have respect for the writers because I, they do some digging. They do some digging. But it's just like, people are trusting their eyes at this point. And a lot of us, we trust our eyes on what we saw with Isaiah Land. So that's where the outrage comes from. Because we know that Isaiah Land would have made us a better football team at that point. So it's just like, well, who would you rather cut during that time? Well, I made it known on Twitter, but that's crying over spilled milk. There were a couple guys I thought that he deserved a spot over. It's, it's not even just deserved. I think he took a spot. That's where, that's where my frustration came. But I can only be frustrated so much because... Like we said, it's a hell of a problem to have. So it's not, I'm not going to complain anymore. This is the roster. This is who we're going to win with, right? And that's pretty much it, man. I just wanted to kind of get it out on camera how I felt about the Isaiah Land situation. Now let's jump into the new corner that we, we traded for. I did a little bit of film recon out of his last preseason game. So let's get into it. <laughs> 2020 NFL draft. Miami Dolphins select Noah Defensive back. What's going on, Cowboys Nation? It's your boy DMV back with another one. Now it's not breaking news. We've had some time to digest it a little bit. The Cowboys traded Calvin Joseph, the 2021 second round pick for the Dolphins 30th uh, or 2020. 30th overall first round pick, Noah Igbenogany, or however the heck you say his name. I'm, I'm going to get better at it, I promise y'all. It, But um, I, what I wanted to do was I wanted to kind of digest it a little bit, look at what it meant. You know, for the most part, it looks like it's a fresh start for both guys. And if you think about it, both of these guys are, are what you would call uh, C-19 babies for the most part. The draft process was a little bit different. Uh, people didn't really get to see those guys up close and personal. And a lot of stuff was virtual. So um, there are a lot of teams right now that are really struggling with those draft picks as it as it may right now. But let's get to the film, man. All right. One thing I'm going to always preach is that you're as good as the last thing that you put on tape, right? So we've seen enough of both players over the last two years. But Cowboys Nation, we have never seen Noah play before. So I'm going to go to film from his last preseason game. So let's get into it. Now, in this play, it's really hard to kind of figure out what they're doing. In my mind, I think it's man up. 
right here, but they're in the vanilla shell here. And he's going to be a, a, a just a smidge late on the reaction, but it's not a bad or terrible play. You know what I'm saying? He came downhill when he was supposed to, and you know what I'm saying? There's no yak. Now it was a first down, and many would look at it like, oh, you know, he gave up this play. But, you know, it might, knowing, not knowing the rules, it, it kind of, you know, hampers the situation a little bit. Right there, it wasn't much to see. Um, on this play, now you will find out that Jacksonville kind of targeted him quite a bit. You're going to see them go right back to a slant or, or, you know what I'm saying, a shallow end on that play. And, you know, he, he's a tick slow coming out of that back pedal. Again, it's hard to know without knowing the rules. Maybe it was the slot corner's responsibility and he reacted just to the football being thrown. But we're just looking at, you know what I'm saying, key skills and things like that out of him to see if we can work him as an outside corner. Again, they target him there. The throw could have been a little bit better, but for some odd reason, they're targeting him. Maybe they 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 realize that he's slow coming out of that break. Here he's going to do an excellent job staying in that hip pocket on the outside guy, so it was a great job this time. Uh, now they got a motion coming his way, and we're going to see him just do a good job and run support and, tra and track the near hip and make the tackle. Here he's going to do a good job playing off man here, and he's going to stay in the hip pocket on this dig right here. So I don't necessarily believe it's even just him being slow in his breaks. It might just be route recognition from him on the outside where, you know what I'm saying, sometimes, some of the times he's, he's a tick slow. I don't know what the hell Miami doing here, but he's in a good spot. He just needs to turn around. You know what I'm saying? Like, does a good job, you know what I'm saying, playing off, tracking the hip. And if he just turns around, he might even get an interception here. You know, it might be a confidence thing. This is about as solid of a football play from a cornerback that you can get right here. Watch how he tightens down and runs support, tracks near hip, and, and comes up and helps make the tackle. Now, again, off, off ball, they're going to do a quick out. This is probably one of the hardest things to cover right there. That, that, that's definitely one of the hardest things to cover. And, um, you know, I think Dallas will probably use him a little bit different if they had to put him at corner. But here, he does a good job sinking back and taking away that corner route. So, so here are his career numbers as far as PFF goes. And, you know, sometimes I just really want to get a, a feel for him and feel for the trade that we got. And um, you're going to see what his preseason numbers look like, which they don't look very, very strong. And then we're going to compare them to Kelvin Joseph's numbers, which I believe Kelvin Joseph had a stronger preseason. You know what I'm saying? These are Kelvin Joseph's numbers right here. And you guys, if you have PFF access, you know what I'm saying? You know where to find it. I'm not really, you know, banking a whole bunch on it. But I do know that this is a guy that's going to come in, help the special teams room. Um, and I just think it was more so about the change of scenery for both. You know what I'm saying? In Miami, he probably didn't pan out the way that they wanted to. Just like Kelvin Joseph in Dallas for a second-round pick, he didn't pan out to what we really wanted. So it was a win-win for both guys. You know, uh, Noah gets a change of scenery. Kelvin gets a change of scenery in Miami. And, you know, hopefully it'll work out. I don't know if any side got over on any side with this, but it's more so he has some traits that Dan Quinn and, and the special teams guys feel like – you know, they can help implement to make this a better football team. But let me know what you think, guys think in the comment section, man. I'm out.